Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton, and today I'd like to talk to you about the cross product, also known as the vector product. To begin with, the cross product is a form of vector multiplication, and there are two types of vector multiplication. The dot or scalar product takes two vectors and you get a scalar, a magnitude only as your output. The vector product or cross product on the other hand, you take two vectors and what you get out of that is another vector, a third vector. That's why it's known as the vector product as well as the cross product. So let's take a look at how this works. The cross or vector product of two vectors gives you a vector that is perpendicular to both your initial vectors whose magnitude is equal to the area of a parallelogram that's defined by the two initial vectors. So if we look over here on the right, if we start with vector A and vector B, vector C, the cross product of A and B, is going to be perpendicular to both A and B. So C is defined here perpendicular to A and B. And how long is C? To figure out the magnitude of C, what we're going to do is we're going to make a parallelogram between A and B, something sort of like that. And if we were to find that area, that area gives you the magnitude of the cross product, the magnitude of vector C. The positive direction of the cross product is given to you by the right hand rule. If you take A cross B, take the fingers of your right hand, point them in the direction of vector A, and then bend your fingers in the direction of vector B, your thumb is going to point in the positive direction for vector C, the vector product. Now the cross product of parallel vectors has to be zero because if you try to take the area of a parallelogram defined by the parallel vectors, you're going to get an area of zero. So let's see how we can put this into practice here. If we wanted to find the magnitude of the cross product, the magnitude of A cross B is given by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them where the angle between them is the smaller of the angles. If you have two vectors, you could go one direction from one to the other, or you could go the long way. You could go all the way around the other direction. Pick the smaller angle. So calculating the cross product, this can be a little bit trickier. If we look at it in vector unit, unit vector notation, A cross B is equal to well, the y component of A times the b component of z minus the z component of A times the y component of b, all in the direction of i hat, the unit vector in the x direction. So that gives you your x component of vector c. To get the y component of your cross product, you take the z component of A times the x component of b and subtract the x component of A times the z component of b. And finally, to get the z component of your vector product, of your cross product, the x component of A times the y component of B, sub, and then subtract the y component of A times the x component of B. So in unit vector notation, that's kind of a lot to handle. May, might not be a bad idea to memorize it, but that's not the only way we can do that. We could also look at this from the perspective of matrix notation. If we look at this in the form of a determinant, we want to find A cross B. That's equivalent to saying, let's take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, where our first row is I hat, J hat, and K hat, the unit vectors in the X, Y, and Z direction. Then we write the X, Y, and Z component of vector A and the X, Y, and Z component of vector B. And to take a determinant, it always helps me if I go and I repeat these a little bit to give me a little bit more room. So I'm going to put over here AX in ay, I'm just going to repeat this again, and bx and by. And I could go further repeating them, but having done a lot of cross products, this is how much you're going to need. And let's do the same thing on the left. If we were to comp complete this pattern over here on the left, we would have az right here and ay right here, and for b, the same idea, bz and by. Now to take the determinant of this three by three matrix, what we're going to do is for our X component, we're going to start up here at I hat and we're going to draw a line down and to the right. So what we're going to have is a Y times B Z down into the right is positive. And then what we're going to subtract from it, we'll start here again and we'll subtract a Z by and all of that will multiply by 
i hat. Let's do the same thing for the y component. We'll start with j hat. We'll go down and to the right as our positive. So the j component, the uh, j hat, the y component, will be az bx minus ax bz in the direction of the unit vector in the y direction, j hat. And for our z component, we'll look over here at k, k hat, down and to the right is positive. So we'll have ax by minus ay bx k hat. So to get our entire vector, our cross product in unit vector notation, I could write all of that together as, well, let's see, we've got AYBZ minus AZBY I hat plus AZBX minus AXBZ all times j hat, unit vector in the y direction, plus our z component, ax by minus ay bx k hat, the unit vector in the z direction. So there's our cross product, another way to come up with that formula. All right, so let's see if we can't do a couple sample calculations here. Find the cross product of the following vectors, and we're given a vector is 0, 2, 0, 2 units in the y direction. The b vector is 2 units in the x direction, and we want to find c, which is the cross product of a and b. Well, one way we could do this is to use our definition, our understanding of the cross product. So I'm going to start off by finding the magnitude of a. The magnitude of vector a is just going to be well, let's take the square root of its three components, 0 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared. Square root of 4 is just going to be 2. And that only makes sense. The magnitude of that vector must be 2. And we can find the magnitude of b in the same way. And by inspection, you can probably already see that that's going to be 2 as well. So then to find the magnitude of c, well, the magnitude of c, if you recall by our definition, well, that's going to be magnitude of a magnitude of b times the sine of the angle between them, which will be 2 times 2 times the sine of 90 degrees. But the sine of 90 degrees is 1. Therefore, this is just going to be equal to 4. So the magnitude of our cross product must be 4. Well, how does that get us to the cross product? Well, remember that the cross product gives you a vector that is perpendicular to both of your original vectors. And if a is in the y direction and b is in the x direction, the only way you can be perpendicular to both of those is if you've got something in the c direction. Pardon me, in the z direction. Therefore, the c vector must be 0, 0, and then something with the magnitude of 4. But what we don't know is the sign of that 4. Is that positive or negative? And to figure that out, we can use our right-hand rule. What we can do is let's make a little axis here. We'll call this our x, our y, and our z. And we've got a cross b. So if we've got a, that's two units in the y direction. There's a. b is two units in the x direction. So we've got a crossed with b. Imagine taking the fingers of your right hand, pointing them in the direction of a, in that red direction bending them in the direction of B, in the, in the, uh, toward the pink. What happens then is your thumb must point down on your right hand. Therefore, that must be in the negative Z direction. So this must be a negative 4. So that's one way you could do that problem. Let's take a look <coughs> excuse me, at another method. Find the cross product of the exact same vectors, but now we're going to use that determinant method. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to draw my 3x3 three three matrix. We'll start with i hat, j hat, and k hat. Then we'll draw our a vector, 
0, 2, 0, and then our b vector, 2, 0, 0. And to make this easier, I always like repeating the, uh, the matrix. So that's a 0, 2. We've got a 2, 0 here. This will be a 2, 0, and that will be a, what do we have here? 0, 0. So that's what our matrix looks like. If we come here and we start doing our determinant, for our x component, we have 0 minus 0, so there's nothing in the x. In the j direction, y component, we have 0 minus 0, still nothing. And in the k hat direction, here we have 0 positive and we have 2 times 2, negative 4. So c, therefore, must be negative 4 k hat, which is also written as 0, 0, negative 4. Same answer. And of course we should get the same answer. It's the same problem. We just attacked our cross product in a little bit different manner. Now let's take a look at just a couple properties of cross products. A cross B is equal to the opposite of B cross A. That's because of the right-hand rule in there. A cross B is not equal to B cross A. You can't just switch them. A cross B is equal to the opposite of B cross A. That negative sign is important. A crossed with the quantity B plus C is equal to A crossed with B, the quantity, plus the quantity A crossed with C. A constant C times the quantity A cross B is equal to the constant C times A crossed with B, or A crossed with the constant times B. And finally, derivatives. The derivative of the quantity A cross B is equal to the derivative of A crossed with vector B plus A crossed with the derivative of vector B. So those are some important cross product properties. All right, hopefully that gets you a good start on cross products or vector products. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks everybody and make it a great day.